What's going on, guys? It is your motivational guy. That's right, I'm back. The one and only Keith Allen. How you guys doing today? Yo, this year, you gotta do things like you've never done before. You have to step outside of your comfort zone. You know, try new things out. You know, grow. This is how we grow in life, guys. So face your fears this year. You can do it. I'm your number one fan. And hey, if you mess up, get back up and try again. All right, be successful this year. Go for it. So today, we're gonna to be going over the best tips and tricks that you can use to adapt to the season two meta. Now, the changes this season have brought, you know, an entirely new life to the game. You know, even though the additions are excellent, one thing irritating most of us is the meta. No doubt, like, this is one of the most brutal metas in Fortnite history. I mean, it's as if someone, like, at Epic, hated turtling so much, they just tried to add as many spam counters as they possibly could. So today, let's talk about how you need to adjust your playstyle to survive in this hectic meta. All right, ladies and gentlemen, for my question of the day, here we go. What is the most irritating aspect of this season for you? You know, for us, it's gotta be the C4 during the end game. You know, as it sometimes it feels like it's just like no way to avoid it, but let me know in the comment like what annoys you guys the most. And if you're looking for more tips to pop off this season, you can find them on our site, ProGuys.com. Okay, so listen, our courses are structured to help you guys improve rapidly. And with private coaching from pros, you can get advice directly from the best. Be sure to like this video today and sub if you're not already. Then check out ProGuys.com. All right, guys, everybody get the candy out right now. It's about that time, ladies and gentlemen around the world. You got to scream this out with me. It's time to sit back. Come on, relax and grab some of my favorite candy. What is that? It's that bunch of crunch. And let's get this going. All right, my friends, let's get into this. All right, so we're a few weeks into season two and everyone wants to land at one of the new POIs for a chance at those mythic items, right? Especially the shark and the agency. But uh, the thing is, if you're looking to climb an arena or do well in the upcoming cash cups, choosing one of these locations as your drop spot might not be the best idea. Yeah, listen up. They're heavily contested from the get go. And not only that, yo, but another strategy makes them even more dangerous. And that, my friends, is the flank strat. All right, so the flank strat, check this out, is where you land right on the outskirts of one of those new POIs, loot and farm what you can, then head toward the spot to clean up whoever's left over. So this is like a fantastic strat that you can get some of that good tier loot with minimum effort. However, there's still a bit of a risk because there's always the chance like the last remaining player is full HP and kitted with a mythic weapon. So where should you go instead? Honestly, if you're looking to have consistent games, your best bet, guys, is somewhere low key that you're familiar with. Being familiar, guys, by far is like the most crucial factor when it comes to winning early games. And if you pick a spot that will only have one or two opponents, you're gonna make it out so many more times in early games. If you happen to be in the market for a new solo spot, you should try out the Blue Steel Bridge just east of Pleasant Park. All right, guys, so this bridge has a lot going for it. First off, there's one of those henchman chests, you know, that you can just open it without a scanner. Right next to that chest is a slurp truck that can get you guys full shield. At the bridge itself, there are five chests, one in the back of the dump truck, one inside the building, two on the railings underneath, and then one in a bush by the river below. So there's also another chest in a bush right to the north of the bridge, two more on the road going south, two more on the hill. Oh, and I uh, forgot about this, three more in the small wooded area south of that. So at the end of the day, man, there are plenty more goodies nearby, like, you know, some fishing spots you can hit up. But overall, man, like this has been our favorite low key landing spot this season. So I recommend that you give it a try and let us know how it goes. And once you get past the early game, you usually want to play passively and focus on your rotations. For zones one to three, okay, there are pretty much two strategies that you can use to rotate. First is playing center circle. So by positioning near the center, you gain a higher chance of being favored by the zone. And overall guys, man, you'll reduce the amount of running you have to do, which means you'll encounter fewer players. But sometimes, you know, reaching the center of the zone is a long journey. And on that trek, you might get noticed by some enemies out there. So another strategy is to rotate through the less congested side. You know, that's the side of the circle that has the fewest players rotating into. So for instance, if circle two is all the way on the northwest coast of the map, the north side of it is gonna have the fewest players. And the more congested side would be the south since everybody is gonna be heading in that direction. If you're able to rotate through the less crowded side, trust me on that, then head to the center and you're gonna increase your chances of survival a lot. 
For zone four, you know, there's really no benefit to playing the center. Instead, playing the edge is what you should be doing. Okay, so by doing that, like you take a chance and you might get favored. But again, you know, focus on picking the side with the least amount of players. This means paying attention to any gunfire you hear, you know, how many builds you see and basing where you want to set up at. Zone five is the half in half out circle. If you're lucky and you get favored, your job is to look for kills on players coming in. Okay, so if the circle doesn't spawn on you, your goal is just making it in. You know, you can use launch pads here and just try to land in the area that was just covered by the storm. But if your lobby is stacked, whew, you risk getting beamed in the air, man. So sometimes it's better to just run it. Gliding, gliding, so many gliding. Petra 52 south, what's, what's, what's? When running it, rotate as early as possible and try to conserve mass by using enemy builds to cover. If you're wondering about, you know, rotation strategies for the end game moving zones, we're gonna get to those later in this video. So hang on. So with traps gone, pretty much every player in the game now tries to ramble into your box the first chance they get. But if they aren't doing that, they'll instead probably use C4 on you now. Unfortunately, there just really isn't, you know, always a way to defend against these dangerous nuances, man. Still, there are just a few methods that you can use to survive once you hear those beeps. Okay, so the first is to use a launch pad and then just get the heck out of there as soon as possible, please. Okay, so if you're fast enough, you can edit out the back, place a launch pad and then just dip. And if you're lucky, your opponent's C4 will destroy the pad after you take it, meaning they can't quickly chase you down. But we don't always have launch pads, right? So another strategy, guys, is to edit out and tunnel away from your opponent. You have to be fast and it uses materials. Plus, you know, you're not always guaranteed to avoid damage, right? But anything is better than just sitting there, not moving at all. So the third thing you need to start doing, guys, to defend against the C4 is building larger bases, yeah. So the traditional single box doesn't really fit well in this meta anymore. Now, building two by twos or even bigger bases are what's going to keep your position more concealed and make it less likely for opponents to waste their C4 on you. So if you're worried about losing mats, you can create massive bases at little to like no cost by taking over a house or building, replacing the walls, you know, floors and ceilings with your own builds. I know there are situations where C4 is like way too powerful, like in duo matches and scrims, but still a majority of us aren't playing against it, you know, the best that we can. So follow our tips, guys, and you won't get blown to shreds anywhere near as often, I promise you. All right, so C4 is definitely a hot topic this season, but another thing that has everybody all riled up is heavy snipers. Ever since Epic added more shadow bases in the recent patch, everybody and their dog carries a heavy sniper. And with the ability just to one-shot walls, cheesy strats from the past have come back to haunt us. One of those strats is the double heavy sniper. Okay, so if you're playing duels or squads, any team with more than one heavy sniper can pull this OP trick off. With a quick 3-2-1 countdown and some, you know, adequately timed shots, the first shot destroys the wall and the second one hits your target. Of course, this strategy is busted, but, you know, to the point where no matter how hard you try, at some point, it's gonna happen to you. But just like with that and everything else, there are ways to prevent it in the first place. I mean, nope, I literally lost everything. Come, come to me, come to me. We can double every time here. South. Three, one, two, two, one, go. Three, go. Finish for you. We, we can go for that. Wait. No. First off, and I know this might seem kind of stupid, but whatever. Don't stand still. If you stand still, you're just putting a target over your head, right? That's even how players typically decide to go for the double snipe because they see a player standing still inside their box. I know we're all so used to just feeling safe inside our boxes, I get it. But that just isn't the case anymore. It's not a 100% foolproof method or anything like that, but moving around makes it way, way, way less likely for you to get hit. So another tactic is to add extra builds for protection. So the double heavy snipe works, you know, if you only have a single build piece covering you. But if you expand out and, you know, you add more pieces between you and the potential heavy snipe, you're going to be safe, just as Kanata demonstrates right here. And I mean right here. And it doesn't even have to be walls, man. You know, it could be a single ramp. Yes, putting extra protection uses your mats, but hey, you know, it beats dying. Also, you can always add a ramp in your box that'll block another shot from a single direction. But you know what's even better than a ramp is an edited cone. The cone with three tiles edited blocks potential heavy snipes from two directions. So, you know, it's just better to use that instead. 
And one final way to protect against double heavy snipers is to build with metal. And I'm sure you guys already know this, like spotting targets behind wood walls is exceptionally straightforward. With brick, it becomes slightly harder, but with metal, my goodness. Walls at full health are the only ones that are gonna keep you hidden. So if you're setting up a base, use metal. It'll deny your opponent's vision and they won't be able to land the shot. Finally, guys, let's talk about in-game strategies. Now, how you play moving zones is typically dictated by whether or not you get favored. If you get lucky and you're like close to the next safe zone, it's a good idea to just stay as close to it as possible. Either use it, you know, like a traditional tunnel or an efficient one like the floor wall ramp tunnel. And anytime you get a sizable lead, guys, look behind you for potential kills on players trying to scramble in. But if you're like on the far side of the zone, you need to just bust out your utility. Wait for the zone to start moving, then use a launch pad if you still have one. That way, you can just glide toward the far side of the zone and get into a better position. Now, if you don't have any launch pads, somewhere near you might use one. So keep your eyes and your ears peeled as you might be able to see or hear it. Also, if you happen to have the Mythic Rappler, the item by itself can serve all your mobility needs, no problem, but you gotta be warned on this one, guys. Once enemies hear the grappler go off, whew, they're gonna be looking for you, and you don't wanna get caught mid-grapple, you don't wanna do that, so you should use it sparingly, all right? Now, if you're all Spider-Man with it, you might just get laser mid-air, I'm telling you. Okay, so what about high ground? Good question. When is the right time and the best ways to take height? Well, all right, you need to assess a few things here, right? First, which zone is it? You know, if you're playing solos, height takes usually, you know, between zones seven and nine and any earlier, and you'll likely run out of mats before the end of the match. And in duos, you know, since you have double the materials to use, you could just go for it as early as zone six. Second, okay, so how far up is height? If there's something like 10 stories above you and you're playing low ground, go for height isn't really the move here. But if they're like only two stories up and you see an opportunity to crank up, then you can always go for it. That is unless you have a grappler, of course. The grappler is amazing for like yoinking height during the end game. So much so that if you're the one, you know, holding height, that's one of the main things you need to watch out for this season. All right, guys, so let's go over what we just learned today. All right, so if the new spots have been working for you, then great. But for most of us, you know, being like really familiar really, really makes us better with our landing spot, all right? For zones one to three, try to position near the center of the safe zone. All right, so when rotating, try to think of which side will have more players and avoid it immediately. For zone four, you can get up near the edge and just, you know, gamble for the half in and half out. C4 is OP. And the only things that we can do against it is either like launch pad away or just try to expand out once you hear them get placed. You can prevent this in the first place by building large bases so that players are not going to be as inclined, you know, just to waste their C4 since they know it's not going to hit you. All right, guys, so heavy snipers probably needed to be toned down just a little. But to stop the double heavy sniper strat, build with metal. Add extra builds for protection. And most importantly, please, just please do not stand still. And, you know, to survive during the end game, man, quick rotations are key here. So don't be afraid to use launch pads to navigate during the moving zones, especially, you know, if it's not in your favor. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for today's video. Hope you guys found it helpful. You know, if you did, please do not hesitate to drop a like and subscribe for more tips and tricks videos again. <laughs> Once again, this is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. I will see you later. Peace.